Continuing our National League Central Farm previews, there's one organization that has a ton of high-level outfield talent. It's the Milwaukee Brewers. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer and podcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So the Milwaukee Brewers have a couple things that they are very good at. It feels like they're good at developing pitchers. Uh, They are good at improving catchers defensively, and they are good at, apparently, evaluating outfield prospects and their potential to impact the bigs. This system is loaded with outfielders, and none are as highly rated as number one prospect in the system and one of the top prospects in all of baseball, outfielder Jackson Churio. 2021 IFA had a a solid debut in the Dominican Summer League uh, in 2021. 296, 386, 447. Uh, five home runs, 13 extra base hits, 23 walks, 28 strikeouts. As a 17-year-old, made it stateside last year, skipped rookie ball, went straight to low A, and low A, high A, brief cup of coffee like a week in double A Biloxi. So 99 total games. 288, 342, 538, 20 home runs, 55 extra base hits in 99 games, so more than one every other game, 32 walks to 118 strikeouts, 16 to 20 on stolen bases. It is very difficult to try to encompass the potential of what Jackson Churio could be or to properly describe what he is good at because he's good at so many things. Uh, The weakest thing, his arm is probably just kind of average. Some of that is, as an amateur, he had an issue with his right elbow. And so they moved him from uh, shortstop slash second base to center field. He's a full-timer there now. And it, it, they've kind of been protecting his arm a bit. So it may be better than average. We just haven't seen it really. He have, we haven't really seen him let it eat because they've been protecting it. But uh, 70 speed. So he's a plus defender in center field already. The reads, routes, reactions came very good. He likes to play shallow and go back for a ball rather than playing deep and charging balls. Uh, but looks very good. He should be able to hold the speed as he continues to physically mature. So he should be a plus defender for a while. Now, offensively, he has a very, very evolved power speed combination for an 18-year-old. Tons of athleticism, and it's incredibly fast swing. Just, I mean, like he whips the barrel through the zone. Uh, so he can, when he makes contact, he can drive a ball to every single field. Uh, and despite only being 18 years old and being, you know, 6'1", 170, he hit 20 home runs last year. And so he, he projects to be a, a 30 home run threat in the majors, provided he continues to develop. Uh, it, it's probably easier to talk about what struggles you still have with Jackson Churio at this point in time. Obviously, we mentioned the arm. Uh, he is prone to chase quite a bit. Uh, and it, it's it's something where he has the plate coverage to put to put a bat on a ball thrown to any part of the strike zone. And so you don't always notice the chase simply because he usually can get to it. But if you can execute a very good pitch that starts on the outer half of the zone and breaks outside, you can get him to swing and miss, and that's where a lot of the strikeouts come from. Uh, One of his minor league managers gave a comp, and again, we don't do comps on this show. I've been been over this a couple times about it sets unrealistic expectations for these players. 
one of his minor league managers gave a comp of Ronald Acuna Jr. Do with that what you will. But he is on track at this pace. You could see him in 2023. I feel like it's probably 2024. But you're looking like, I mean, he'll he'll be 20 years old. He'll still be incredibly young. But he just appears to be one of those incredibly, incredibly gifted youngsters who is just going to be a very, very good baseball player almost no matter what. So be very excited about Jackson Churio. Don't plan to have him in the bigs this year, but understand that when he gets up, he is he has the potential, if he reaches his ceiling, to be a perennial MVP candidate. That's how good Jackson Churio is. Number two prospect in the system for most people, uh, outfielder Sal Frelick, 2021 first rounder out of Boston College, and smaller guy, 5'9", 180 or so, got 119 games between high A, double A, triple A last year, 331, 403, 480, 11 home runs, 45 extra base hits, 52 walks to 63 strikeouts, and 24 or 32 on stolen bases. So the thing here, uh, Sal Frelick's whole game is fantastic contact and speed. He's a very, very good athlete, very good hand-eye coordination. And so when you look at like last year, he had almost as many walks as strikeouts, 52 to 63. Uh, and then his strikeout rate was only 11%, got better as he went up. Triple A, he spent a month and a half, 46 games in triple A. Strikeout rate was like, 7%. He's very good at taking what the pitcher gives him. If you throw something on the outer third, he can just hit it to the opposite field. If you throw something inside, he can pull it for a little bit more power. I think the big thing is uh, the power ceiling is limited. I've got him as a 40 power. A lot of it is kind of gap stuff, but as he learns Here's a pitch I can put a little extra into and do some damage to. You could see him, I don't know, 10 to 15 home runs in the bigs. It's probably the ceiling for South Relic. Uh, Speed is very, very good. And so that helps make up for the fringy arm. It's probably a 45 or so. Uh, And and so the very, very good speed lets him play center field. He's got some good, good range, obviously. The instincts are pretty decent. So he'll be, I've seen projections that have him as a plus defender. I'm a little bit uh, lower on him as a defender. I think he'll be above average or so. The question is, and you'll you'll see this when we get to some of these other outfielders, there's so many high-level outfielders for this system that there's somebody who's going to be left out when everybody is ready. And I feel like Sal Fredlick's probably the guy, but I'm not, uh, not everybody feels that way. Uh, number three prospect in the system, outfielder Joey Weimer, 6'5", 215. He is your classic power-hitting third uh, right fielder with a giant arm who is just probably has one of the higher ceilings in this system outside of Jackson Churio. Uh, 2020 fourth rounder out of Cincinnati, again, 6'5", 215, big boy. Spent his time divided... Two-thirds in AA Biloxi, one-third in AAA Nashville. Kind of went along with with Frelick. They kind of promoted them around the same time. So 127 total games. 256, 386, 465. 21 home runs, 57 extra base hits, 55 walks to 147 strikeouts, 31 of 34 on stolen bases. Defensively, what he does very well. He is a plus runner. He has above-average defense. Uh, In center field, I think he'd be a plus defender in right. The arm is absolutely massive. It is an 80-grade arm. And so if he can work on some of the contact issues, we'll get to that in a second, he has the potential to be a very impactful right field defender. From a defensive standpoint, thinking about, uh, and again, not a comp, but kind of a comparison to how he plays, defensively reminds me of a guy like a Jason Hayward, a bigger outfielder who can cover extra ground, has very good instincts in the outfield, and a big arm to help 
prevent extra bases, get outfield assists, things like that. Offensively, the power is 70 grade. The raw power is 70 grade, but there's questions about the quality of the hit tool. He would be a good candidate for your power tool is only as good as your hit tool, but there's somebody else who just has the same power and a maybe a little bit worse hit tool. Still needs to work on a couple things. Obviously, one, the strikeouts were bad, uh, but he has to, and part of that is he has to better be able to adjust to off-speed pitches. He's he's prone to not pick up what it is until it's too late, and he's already committed to a swing. And then being a little more selective with his swing decisions. Again, it comes back to just because you can make contact doesn't necessarily mean that you should make make contact. We're going for high quality contact versus contact for the sake of contact. So a little bit of work there. Uh, struck out about 27% of the time last year. He did get better in AAA, same as South Relic, brought it down to about 20%. And so a scenario where a little bit more refinement, a little bit more exposure to high level off speed and working on per- cutting down the chase. And you're looking at a guy who could be a 30 home run hitter in the bigs, play plus defense in a corner with a giant arm. So the ceiling is one of the highest in this system. There's just a wide range of outcomes because you still have to figure out uh, the contact issues. They are more severe than some of the other guys. Number four prospect in the system, and somebody who I'm a little bit questioning what kind of opportunity he's going to get this year, given some of the recent signings like a Brian Anderson, is Bryce Terang, shortstop and second baseman. Six foot 175. He was a 2018 first rounder out of high school. Got 131 games in AAA. He made he made it up to AAA for the last third of the season in 21, and he repeated the level last year. 286, 360, 412. 13 home runs, 39 extra base hits, 65 walks to 118 strikeouts, 34, 36 on stolen bases. Defensively, plus speed, the arm is average, but he has the skill to play shortstop, to play second base, or play in the outfield. He has spent a little bit of time in center field. Uh, I think he would be an average defender at short. I think he'd be a plus defender at second. Uh, he has a he has plus speed, so the range would help, especially as you get rid of the shift. I was fully expecting this season him to be the second baseman in Milwaukee with Luis Urias at third, But when they signed Brian Anderson, a lot of the comments were he was going to be playing a lot of third base. And so that would move Urias to second. And it's one of those, well, when does Bryce Terang get his opportunity? Offensively, his power jumped last year. He he made some some, some changes and kind of sold out a little bit for power. His previous high in a season had been six in 2021. He hit 13 last year, but we saw the strikeouts tick up with that. Uh, normally, it would be a the line dr- the, the line drive swing puts the ball to all fields and has very good ability to cover the plate. Like I said, he did trade off a little bit of he did sell out for power a bit. Strikeout rate went from fifteen percent in AAA to twenty percent in AAA, but the home runs more than doubled. So gives him I feel like his ceiling's probably ten to fifteen home runs at the big league level, uh, but. I do think he does have the intangibles as in the baseball knowledge and the work ethic to one day get better than that and possibly threaten for 20. Question is just, when does he get to play? Because you brought in Brian Anderson to play third, so you can put Urias at second. And I'm assuming there's going to have to be some sort of injury or something before he gets his opportunity this year. He already has 175 games in AAA, so it's kind of hard to keep him down much longer. And just a minute, I want to get to the state of pitching in this system. Spoiler alert, it is very good. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Uh, the NFL playoffs are here. We're very excited to have our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have a ton of great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. So new customers can get started with just $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. Uh, 
Uh, it has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. The NFL stuff is all out there right now for the NFC and AFC championship games to figure out who goes to the postseason. We also have World Series odds. Uh, soon, they're going to have the MLB over-unders on the season out there, and we will definitely go into those when they get there. The great thing is you can combine a lot of these prep, uh, these bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. And all of this takes place on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Okay, so state of the pitching. Uh, this is particularly important for the Brewers because last I checked, four of your five starters, including top of the rotation, Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff, are all sitting on four years of service time. Like, Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Eric Lauer, Freddie Peralta, all of these guys have four years of service time, which says they're all going to hit free agency, I believe, in 2025. They have the 23 and 24 seasons. 2025, they will all be free agents. And obviously, extensions and things like that are going to be big if you can start getting these guys signed. But a couple options in this system of investments that they've made in guys that are talented but have some work to do, right? Uh, Jacob Mizorowski, 2022 second rounder out of JUCO. Big boy, 6'7", 190. So he's a tall king, but physically has more development to do. And you can see the premium stuff that comes with that size. So fastball slider are both 70 grade pitches with a plus curveball behind them. The fastball 98 to 101, good carry up in the zone, plays up off of that velocity because of the extension. Being six foot seven, it releases so close to the plate. Uh, the slider, wipeout slider. Uh, and and really, he just used those two pitches in college. Those were the main things. He had a really good curveball. Again, potential to be a plus pitch. Didn't use it a lot in college. He's going to bring it back. The Brewers have talked about bringing it back. And again, it looked like it could be a plus back when he had it. He also has a changeup. Uh, kind of looks like a two-seamer. Uh, it sits in the low 90s. Doesn't quite have enough velocity separation. So something to work on there. Uh, but... The issue here is the control is like significantly below average. 76 innings at Crowder Junior College, uh, walked 45 batters, hit 11 guys. And he was in instructs. He got like one and two thirds innings in low A and he walked seven guys. So you got to get the control better. And the delivery has a little bit of, of higher effort to it. So some questions there, kind of iffy, but... Understand the stuff is like number one, number two pitcher quality. There's just a wide variance of what could happen because of the significantly below average control. Uh, again, if he ends up not being able to fix that control, you're still looking at an amazing closer. This dude comes in and he'll be, he was in instructs and was doing like one inning at a time. And he was consistently throwing his fastballs. Like none of them were under 99, 99, 100, 101. Just pumping the velocity in there. So definitely something where he's got the physical tools. You've just got to work on the control. Uh, left-hand pitcher Robert Gasser. Another promising pitcher in the system. 2021 second rounder supplemental out of Houston. Got 27 games last year between high A, double A, and triple A. 394 ERA in 137 innings. 172 strikeouts. So 11.3 per nine to 52 walks, 3.4 per nine, and 11 home runs allowed. The issue here is he just has a lot of good pitches. Nothing is necessarily amazing. Uh, he's kind of 50-50 on fastball to other stuff. The fastball sits 93 or so. It can touch 95. Uh, the sliders, the, the better of the pitches above average. Uh, it's kind of in the low 80s. It's one of those sweepers, horizontal sweeper. It gets over a foot of vertical break. I want to say it's around 15 inches or so. Works against both lefties and righties. Uh, the the He has a cutter that is average, but it, it's shorter break than the slider. Pretty good against righties. Uh, he has a changeup 
that is average. It's in the mid 80s. I feel like it needs a little bit more velocity separation from the fastball, but it has good movements. It gets about eight, about a foot and a half of break to it horizontally. So it works really well against righties as well. Uh, control was pretty good. Small sample size, AAA, the walks ticked up a bit, 5.4 per nine, but 26 innings and five starts. It's just, I don't necessarily think it's a huge concern. The thing here is, bunch of good pitches, nothing's exceptional. If you could improve the quality of one or two of these pitches, maybe get the slider to plus or bring uh, the fastball up a little bit, you're looking at a you know number three or four versus a number five, but still. Uh, I think he could be a guy they call up if you have some injuries at the big league level. You could see him make spot starts this year. Uh, Otherwise, I expect him to spend most of the time in AAA getting better. Uh, Real quick, one more guy. Carlos Rodriguez, the right-handed pitcher. 2021 six-rounder out of high school. Got 26 games last year. 20 of those were starts because they wanted the manager's innings late in the year. Between low A and high A. 301 ERA and 107 and two-thirds innings. 129 strikeouts, 10.8 per nine, 240 walks, 3.3 per nine, seven home runs allowed. Fastball changeup slider guy, fantastic control, right? The fastball sits low 90s. He can touch mid 90s with it. The changeups uh, above average. The slider is only average, could use some more development. But the thing here is the control is fantastic. He can pound the strike zone with strikes. And so it's just a matter of physical development, six foot 165. You know, add some muscle to it. Hopefully that brings some velocity with it and just get him acclimated to pro ball, going a little bit deeper into starts and improve some of those pitches. And you're looking at another rotation option. Plenty of time away, probably three years away at least, but uh, has tools, talented. I like him. In just a minute, let's go over the superlatives. Always the best part of every system uh, and some really interesting players, including, of course, more outfielders right here. Unlocked on MLB Prospects. And we're back. So one of the things that we talk about a lot on this show is your power tool is only as good as your hit tool. And the poster child for that, as much as you probably thought it was going to be Joey Weimer, and again, fantastic power, needs to work on the offense, but there is somebody else who also has fantastic power and probably more work to do on offense. Outfielder Hedbert Perez, 2019 IFA, he's 5'11", 180, so a little bit of a smaller guy, but despite that, fantastic raw power. Um, Got 105 games in last year, all in low A. He got a brief cameo in low A after rookie ball in 21, so they left him there all season. 216, 272, 393, 15 home runs, 40 extra base hits. 30 walks to 132 strikeouts, again in 105 games, 9 of 15 on stolen bases. He's got to figure out the offense because defensively, the speed's only average and the arm is kind of fringe. So he's been playing center field, but he's like, the sense of speed backed up a little bit to just, you know, average, he's going to have to move to a corner. It's probably going to be left field given the the arm strength, especially when you have guys above him like Joey Weimer who have massive cannons. They're better fits for right field than he is. Offensively, uh, he started off as like great power, great speed, and some of this stuff has backed up a bit as he's physically matured since signing as an IFA. The raw power is great, but he struggles to recognize off speed. The bat speed's really good. But he struggles to get it, so it ends up he ends up being a chase. Uh, he doesn't walk a ton. He strikes out too much. And then he also, say this a few times, he needs to be more selective. It's something where he understands and acknowledges that he struggles with off speed. And so when he sees something in the zone, no matter if it's a good pitch to hit or not, he's swinging for it, and he's going to make contact. The bat speed was really good. The contact ability is there. But it wasn't a great pitch to hit, and so it ends up being weak. Like, for having such fantastic power, to have a slash on a 216, 272, 393 is definitely a, you need better swing decisions to make this work. Probably, I would assume, either low A Carolina or high A to start 2023, but just a lot of work to do there. Breakout prospect in the system. Uh, third baseman Luke Adams, 2022 12th rounder out of high school, 
Only got 11 games in the complex league, so small sample size alert. But 375, 512, 562. One home runs, four extra base hit, seven walks to eight strikeouts, and nine of 10 on stolen bases. Contact is very good. Power potential is above average to plus. Uh, the issue here is there's questions about can he stick at third or not. Um, and so if he has to move to the to the outfield, you're looking at a guy who could play left or right, but it's a corner profile. And so that means that you have even more pressure because there are so many promising outfielders ahead of you in the system. Uh, I do, again, I do like the contact, the the ability to make contact. Having seen a couple of those uh, complex league games, I do feel comfortable about him figuring it out and surprising people this year and ending up in the top 30 by probably a midseason update, if not end of year. So, like Luke Adams, again, don't know if he's going to stick at third, might end up being an outfielder, but either way, like him. Uh, the guy who needs to stay healthy and has the best outfield defense, same player, outfielder Garrett Mitchell. 2020 first rounder out of UCLA, 6'3", 215, and had a leg injury in 2021, had an oblique issue in 2022, but tons of promise. So in the minors last year, 64 games, 68 games, between AA, AAA, and a brief time in rookie ball rehabbing. 287, 377, 426. Five home runs, 23 extra base hits, 30 walks to 74 strikeouts, again in 68 games, and 17 of 18 on stolen bases. Got called up to the big leagues late in the year. Small sample size, 28 games, but dramatically outperformed what he had done in the minors. 312, 373, 459. So batting average was 30 points better. On base was about the same. Slugging was 30 points better. Hit two home runs in those 28 games with five extra base hits, six walks to 28 strikeouts, eight to eight on stolen bases. Things you need to know about Garrett Mitchell. One, the out the outfield defense, like I said, is plus 265. It is because he is one of the fastest players in baseball. A legitimate 80 grade speed. Despite being 6'3", 215, he's a very good athlete. He is as good of an athlete as Sal Frelick, despite being completely different physical packages. Uh, the arm is plus, and so I love the range in center field. And I, he has a high floor because he is such a good defender. I think he's one of those, he can bat ninth and kind of be a second leadoff man. Uh, offensively, the swing is bad. And I don't mean the mechanics of the swing. I mean, the the actual, like, uh, he makes very hard contact. The bat speed is very good. The raw power is plus. The issue is his swing is kind of a choppy downhill swing with the idea being I can slap the ball into the ground, make, make contact. I got power behind it, and I could beat out any throw to first base. And he's correct. He can do that. But if he could adjust the swing to be an uphill swing versus a downhill swing, he could explode. He has fantastic potential. Uh, He's 23 years old, and if he hasn't been able to change the swing now, I don't know when he's going to be able to. If you take Garrett Mitchell, the package of the player that he is, and you change that swing from a downhill swing to an uphill swing, I feel comfortable saying he would be a 2020 threat in the majors. If not, one day a 30-30. If, you, if that swing was an uppercut instead of, instead of a punch down into the dirt. I don't know if they're going to be able to make that swing change with him or not. So if he can stay healthy, he's, a, he's an asset in the outfield. I want him to be a breakout, but I have looked and have not seen any videos of him this offseason with an uppercut to his swing. If I can see that, if I can find that, again, I love Garrett Mitchell. I think he is a fantastic athlete, a fantastic defender, and could be an impact offensive player if he could put the ball in the air. Fantastic week this week. We got the Chicago Cubs tomorrow, who also have a lot of outfielders, as well as promising arms and really good pitching development. So I feel comfortable about them getting those arms to the bigs. 
Reminder, if you have questions for Monday's mailbag, I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball, show's on Twitter at Locked on Farm. You can email us, LockedOnMLBProspects at gmail.com, or drop your questions in the new, in the new Locked on MLB Prospects Discord. Link is in the episode description. Link is in the show notes. Until tomorrow's show, this has been Locked on MLB Prospects.